Ah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Amidst all that's going on right now, many people gravitate towards this popular game for comfort in these uncertain times. Created in 1999 by Kazuki Takahashi over in Japan, it started out as a comic book that was adapted into a failed TV series and a card game that faced a similar demise. It was later picked up by Konami and introduced into the US by 4Kids, and now it's slated for its seventh generation, and it's going to air in the US next year. It's got over 10,000 cards, 90 million downloads in the App Store on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and it has the record for most cards sold out of all TCGs, beating out competitors like Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. The game is played between two players who each start with 8,000 life points. Each player tries to lower their opponent's life points to zero, and the first player to drop down to zero points loses, and the other player wins. To diminish your opponent's life points, players must utilize the three different card types, monsters, spells, and traps. Using these cards, they can outwit and outmaneuver their opponents and win the game. Monsters are the cards that you summon into battle. Spells are the cards that help you gain special abilities, like boosting your monster's attack points or drawing cards from your deck. And trap cards are an interruption to your opponent, like preventing them from using spell cards or destroying all monsters on the field. Monsters are going to be the things that you're using to uh, beat into your opponent with. These cards have attack and defense values, and you can use them to either block your opponent's attacks or create your own. When damage is inflicted to your opponent, it's subtracted from their life total of 8,000. The first player to reach zero loses, and the other one wins. Exodia, obliterate! You did it! Yugi, you won! The other way to win the game is to have your opponent draw all the cards possible from their deck. Each player can only have 40 to 60 cards in their deck, so the clock is always ticking. Monsters have levels, ranks, or link ratings. They all mean different things, but what you need to know is, depending on how high or low their link rating, level, or rank is, is how many cards you have to use to get them on the field. For example, a level 4 or lower monster doesn't require any cards to normal summon them. But something like a level 7 monster will require two tributed monsters off the field to bring it out. Powerful cards like the Blue Eyes White Dragon are harder to bring out than something like Moki Moki. As said before, monsters are going to be used for attacking, but some of them can also have pretty useful effects. Cards can help draw other cards from your deck to your hand, destroy cards your opponent controls, or even do things like burn them without having to attack. You can only normal summon a monster once per turn. That includes tribute summoning and normal setting. But you can special summon cards as many times as you want in your turn, unless restricted for some reason. Combo decks are pretty popular in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Being able to special summon multiple times and build an impressive board that can stop your opponent is definitely a strategy to be reckoned with. There's also the popular decks that enjoy slowing your opponent down with powerful trap cards. With all three card types in mind, decks have three different options to pick from. Combo, which takes advantage of using monsters and spells most often to set up powerful turn one boards and make sure that your opponent has a hard time getting through your defenses. Control decks which usually play a myriad of traps, monsters, and spells to reach a common goal. Decks like True Draco, Guru Control, and Mystic Mind Stun are all popular examples of this. These decks are going to be making sure that your opponent has a hard time getting through your defenses, but you are not going through full hard combos. Your deck takes advantage of the grind game, and the longer that you last, the harder the chance is that they're going to beat you. Finally, there's Ramp Up decks, which play a little bit of both. These tempo-type decks like Burning Abyss start out with unimpressive boards, but end up with big, heavy hitters. The longer these decks play out, the harder it is to beat them. Now, the game is obviously more complicated than this, but that's roughly how the game is played. Obviously, with 10,000 plus cards, there's gotta be something for everybody. You want machines? They have that. You want dragons? <laughs> of course. You want machines that look like dragons? Well, they have that too. You want housekeepers that turn into dragons? They 
also have that. You want plants? You want zombie plants? They got you covered again. Are you interested in Dante's Divine Comedy? This might come as no surprise, but they have a deck for that too. Do you enjoy not having any friends? <laughs> There's a deck for that too. There's really something for everybody in this game. Finally, I got to sit down with one of my friends and talk to them about their Yu-Gi-Oh experience. As a Yu-Gi-Oh veteran, Solomon had some great insights. My name is Solomon Bennett. Um, I'm 26 now, and I played Yu-Gi-Oh from the ages of, geez, um, I want to say like six, really early, like six or seven to around 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. I was probably like, it took me a while to stop because I didn't want to stop. I did it for years. I was going to like um, tournaments every weekend. Um, but um, yeah, that's kind of like just how I got into it. Um, I've just like held on to it. I just was into it for years. I don't know what like made me like interested in it. I think the show really, like I watched a lot of like, you know, cartoons on, I watched a lot of anime and like a lot of cartoons on Saturday morning. So I think that's what made me like get into Yu-Gi-Oh! And then the show was just, and then the, the cards were just easy. I played with a couple decks. I remember I had a six samurai deck that I loved that I lost on a plane and I was like really bad. I was like, I had it on the plane, I forgot the plane. I love that deck. There is also a cyber dragon deck, which was like probably like the last deck I was really running with until I stopped. Um, but my main deck, which I was like, was uh, the monarch deck. Like the monarchs were, were sick because you could like bring them out. And that was my whole game plan, just like bringing out big guys. I can just do stuff when they came out like, and had effects like that. I went to regionals with that deck. You know, modern movie. Well, the game's definitely a lot faster now. Like, um, you know, there's a lot a lot more rules, you know, there's more um just like new piles to play with now, new types of like summoning techniques and stuff. Um also people are like playing not even in person a lot anymore. Like I remember uh at, at uh Duel Links, you know Duel Links. Like I got that with my friend I, uh, Izel, and we were playing, and I was like a throwback. And then I realized like how many people were on this thing, and it was just like crazy to see. And it was just um, so it was interesting. And I, I remember seeing some videos about like because um, I remember in the show they had like the dual discs, you know, like you could, like play your cards on there, and it would look like like you know you play the cards and they would come out in real life. And I remember I saw some videos just like how uh, VR is trying to do that, like make a real like VR Yu-Gi-Oh game, which I thought was like insane. I was like, I totally get get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just more technological. It's more like you know, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not really personal. Yeah. Um. I mean, especially now with everything going on in the world, it's uh, it's not the same, but it's definitely cool to still have and experience in the first place. So I think that's why a lot of people gravitate more towards this online, uh, this kind of platform. And there's tournaments going on right now with cash prizes of upwards of like $3,000. And people are still pulling together and doing like crazy stuff. So it's uh, it's definitely different, but I think it's changed in, a, in some ways for the better. Because I mean, obviously there's no way to have it in person right now. But yeah, was there was there anything besides the show? How'd you get your information? How'd you learn about cards and decks? And how'd you get better at the game? Because there wasn't an online mm -hmm. platform. Like uh, yeah, like going off like the price again. Like like I remember when Crash Card Virus was like three hundred dollars. I was like, and that was like the, that was the moment I knew I'd stop. Like that was the moment I knew like this is going like something more. <laughs> like, I'm not like buying some card like this. Um, but I don't know, like it was, it was, I read Shonen Jump a lot because I was a big anime and manga guy, you know, kid and still am. And so uh, that like kind of gave me a big clue into like, you know, what, what cards are coming out, like, you know, like what's going on in the, in the manga and in the show. And as far as like, like any new information, it was really just like magazines or like the store. You know, like the collectibles and like the trading card store guy that would like tell you, or, like, tell you, yeah, we're gonna have a new uh, box set come out next week. You know, and like people would, like, like you know, save up their money and like spend like 160 or so. I think that's the price on like a box. And um, yeah, yeah, so it was just, and I was also going every Saturday. It was just like my thing. And so like I was kind of like just in that world. And so like uh, you know, just having those those kind of those are my friends. You know, like that's those are my only friends. I've been friends at school. It was, like at the 
intrigued. I, that's Would you recommend Yu-Gi-Oh to someone my age or even someone a little older than I am? Oh yeah. Why would you recommend it? Absolutely. I mean, just because, um, I mean, I'm an artist, that's like what I do by trade, and the inspiration I've gotten from like Yu-Gi-Oh and um, just the il illustrations, the creativity that I developed at that age, like just building decks, um, like, you know, falling in love with the imagery, like how the graphics were actually like designed and the characters and just the, the cool gameplay and the cool sort of like different deck types that came out. It was, it was, it meant the world to me as a kid, like just to be like, so have that little creative outlet that was just like mine, you know, I didn't have to like yeah. compete or, and it was just like $10 a pack, you know, you get the starter decks. And so I don't know, I would definitely recommend it to anyone of any age. Like there's more, there's a, there's a lot to find in that game. You know, there's a lot of fun, and you can, you can definitely, even for someone older. I also got to get an interview with one of my Yu-Gi-Oh heroes, Winter Kills, a YouTuber with 17,000 subscribers. Needless to say, I was pretty excited. All right, uh, my name is uh, Winter Kills. I go by on YouTube, but my actual name is Mike. Um, I uh, I make YouTube videos about Yu-Gi-Oh. I have been for. Uh, probably almost six years now, over six years as of uh, February. Um, started out as just something I did on my own for fun, and I still do it for fun now. Um, but uh, for a little while, I had the YouTube channel. I didn't know what to do with it, and then one day I made a deck profile, and it was really, really bad. Uh, I don't think it's, and I don't think it's on my channel anymore because of how bad it was. <laughs> I took it down a couple years ago, but. Um, consistently just kept posting whatever decks I could come up with, like in deck profile formats, just going off of like how other people at the time were doing it. Um, and it just grew from there. I started filming other types of videos that other people were interested in, like live duels. I think one of the earliest live duels I did was like back in June of 2014. And it was not the best, but you know, just working with what I had. And then eventually it was just like snowballing years just putting out videos and videos and it's grown to where it is now with over 17,000 subscribers from started from just a just some uh an old ipod camera or whatever and in, in my in my kitchen filming some really bad decks and it's grown to where it is now over these years and it's it's really exciting to see where it is and it's still really really fun um very glad i get to do something like this so yeah, obviously, um, Yu-Gi-Oh has been a pretty big part of your life. Have you made it into a job or something that's more sustainable than just putting the money out there? Uh, yeah, um, definitely. I, I never thought it would uh, give me some sort of financial stability. Um, it's obviously not perfect. Um, that's why I do other things like Twitch, um, which helps out a lot, and other sorts of things. I have the, the sponsorships that I've been able to acquire over the years with uh, TCG player and Imperium Duelist. Um, it's helped out a lot. Um, but no, I never I never thought this would be something, um, especially in this specific category of just covering Yu-Gi-Oh videos, um, would, would get, get me to the point where I am today. I'm very grateful for that. Um, it's smaller things, I could say, is just uh, all the... <laughs> All the stupid things that I've spent countless hours laughing about and talking about and just enjoying while playing Yu-Gi-Oh! at uh, one of my, my local shops here that's really just five minutes away. Uh, because the owner had a, had a back room, uh, still has it, where we would play. And when he'd close up the shop, he'd lock us in in the back and we'd just leave out the back and lock it with the key we had. Um, and we'd just spend hours there after the store closed just play testing listening to music um talking about all sorts of things uh just having a really good time and even just like some nights staying very late like till 3 a.m and going to like denny's afterwards and just staying out way too late and it was all just centered around a bunch of people that played Yu-Gi-Oh together and that was awesome um all people sharing a common interest and you know, having a great time doing it. So that those are some of uh, probably the better memories, just uh, getting out of the house and hanging out with people I probably wouldn't hang out with otherwise had I not played the game in the first place. Um, 
uh, doing things I wouldn't normally do otherwise, which is traveling hours uh, outside of where I live to light events. Um, very, very fun. Some, some great memories, I would say, for sure. 100%. There's been some bad, certainly, but um, a lot of good memories, for sure. So I guess that's a bit of a rhetorical question now, but would you recommend Yu-Gi-Oh! to anybody new? Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, for obviously, there's a few things to take into account. Is uh, How serious do you want to take it from a competitive standpoint? Do you want to go to locals, go to regional events, go to national events, international events even? Uh, because there's so many different levels uh, just getting into playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Do you want to just collect cards? Do you want to collect classic cards? Um, mind you, very expensive if you want the best of the best, but um, I would recommend it. it. Just You do have to look back and be like, you know, what do I want to get out of it? What are you looking to get out of it? Is it just, even if it's just going to locals once a week, meeting new people or, uh, you know, playing the game again with some people that you might not have played it with in 15 plus years. Um, and to reigniting that passion you had for something you really liked as a kid um, and rediscovering it um, and realizing how much fun it still is. Because a lot of people, I feel like, shy away from things uh, that they enjoyed as a kid. Like, oh, that's, you know, I, I enjoyed that when I was a kid. You know, I'm an adult now. I can't enjoy it the same way that I used to, which could not be further from the truth. Um, even like old video games, whatever it may be. Um, to card games you played growing up or watching on TV. Um, so yeah, 100% would recommend it. You just have to look at what you want to get out of it. Well, that's the state of the game right now. Even though Yu-Gi-Oh! has progressed a lot throughout the 20 years, it still has the same fun and excitement for many players. While it brings nostalgia for some, it brings a fresh new excitement for others, and the game lives on even when the whole world seems to be going crazy. It's a fun escape for tons of people, and I, along with Solomon and Winter, recommend people playing it. Thanks for watching.